Okay, so in this video, we are going to look uh, at the R code uh, equivalently for the binomial example that we went through in the other in the previous video. So re recall that we were trying to do uh, accept reject using um, uh, sorry, tr trying to sample from the binomial random variable uh, using the accept reject algorithm. The binomial random variable has this particular probability mass function. And what we realized is that the support of the binomial random variable, because it was 0, 1, 2, going up to n, we had to find a proposal that, that contained this support. And as it turns out, that a proposal that contained that support was the geometric distribution. Uh, and so, uh, and so we, we looked at the geometric random variable or the geometric PMF for this partic particular proposal. And our task was to find a C such that P of X, which is our target distribution, target, target mass function, divided by the proposal mass function, that that is a bounded object. And we looked at the form of the PMF, and this is what the form was. And then we also realized that, wait, we have to bound this uh, object P by Q over the support of our target mass function. And the good news is the support of the target mass function is uh, 0, 1, 2, up to N. So that means that the largest value this takes has to be finite because q of x will be non-zero. So whatever c is, it is this number over here, right? And you can sort of find what all of these numbers are for all of the values of x and then figure out whatever is the maximum value, okay? And so we've gone through this and we've, we went through the R code of implementing this as well, implementing the final accept reject algorithm. But what I wanted to do was actually run this particular R code for you. And so we come back here and we have the R binomial uh, accept reject code. So the first thing I do is I have, I set my seed and the seed setting is to ensure that the result I get uh, when I run the code will be similar to the result you get when you run your code. Okay, now I'm going to create a function. Now remember, recall our introductory uh, video on um, making, you know, working with R. And in, the, in that video, we made some basic functions. Uh, and now very quickly, we've jumped to making a function that does and, or draws one value from a binomial n comma p. n is equal to the number of trials and then p is equal to the probability of success. Okay, so let me just close this window over here. All right. So this function draw underscore binomial is equal to a function that takes two arguments n and p. Okay. Uh, I first have except is equal to zero, which means this ab object is going to track what will be the value of acceptance, um, or whether we are going to x we have accepted the value already in our accept reject algorithm or we are still waiting and try will track the number of proposals we'll try the number of times i have tried to propose a value and um it will just keep updating every time i try to propose a new value uh, now i have to choose and find my maximum over here over all possible values of x and so i create this x equals zero through n to be um, to be all the values from zero to n, and then all underscore c over here is finding this particular expression for all of these values of x. Okay, so this is over here n choose x, so n binom x. That's the choose function times one minus p to the power n minus two x times p to the power x minus one, and I finally inside the function I find c which is the maximum of all the c's here so this is a vector of c's and then uh, i'll just add a little bit more than that for just making sure the numerically it works now the adding the little bit more than that is completely fine because as i said in the notes that c just needs to be an upper bound on the maximum value of p by q it not it need not actually be the maximum Right? It just needs to be an upper bound on the maximum, not the actual maximum itself, um, which means that I can just add a little bit more and it won't change the accuracy of the algorithm. Now, just because we are still new to R, I'm not running this code one line by line because this code is now part of this whole function. So the, the code itself will not, should not work. It will work 
as part of a function so that means you have to run the whole function and then you know it sort of understands what the function is and then you have to run call the function right so currently i'm just going through the code line by line but not actually running it okay now while except is equal to zero or equal equal to zero means is while the value of except is equal to zero keep running whatever is in the while loop so as long as x except is equal to equal to zero you know you increase the value of try because while i have not accepted which is what this is saying i need to keep proposing so now i it goes inside the loop proposes a new value it draws a new value from the uniform random variable and then i want to check whether you know u is less than equal to uh, p by g times c and so the p the actual proposal happens through the random draw from a geometric now that means prop is going to be r geom which is a random geometric how many values do i need i need one value and the probability of success has to be p which is the parameter argument given in the function okay once this is done ratio is calculated to be equal to d by norm d means calculate the density or the probability mass function of this uh, distribution so it's the pmf of the binomial distribution where do you want to calculate the pmf at x equals prop what kind of a binomial random variable is it it's the one with size or n number of trials equals n and the probability of success equals p so that's the numerator p of x divided by c times g of q of x which is c times the d geom the density of a geometric okay now once the ratio has been calculated so this ratio that's calculated is is part of this algorithm right over here now if u is less than equal to this ratio i have to return x equals y x equals the proposed value so if u is less than equal to that ratio i accept i can jump out of the loop and give me give us the actual value else i want to keep back keep going and keep running the loop and keep increasing the number of tries so that's exactly what i do if u is less than ratio except is equal to 1 that means i have accepted right and which means that this is making sure that the while loop does not run after this and rtn the value that i have to return is prop okay so now it goes back here it says oh while except equal 0 wait now except what just became 1 so except is not 0 so it, it exits out of this loop and finally it returns the return value which is the prop value and try try is the number of loops it had to take to actually run this okay so now to run this i run set equal seed and i load this function so now i'm going to squeeze this back out i load the function so this whole function gets loaded i can see it's gotten loaded because it's starting over here and then there is a plus 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 sign and then the the bracket finishes and the usual this sort of greater than sign comes and if that greater sign is coming and a blinking cursor appears it means that the function was loaded now whether it works or not we'll find out when we call the function So we call the function here. The na name of the function is draw underscore binom. N equals ten. P equals point two five. That means I want a draw from a binomial random variable where the number of uh, trials is ten uh, and the probability of success is point two five. Okay. The the draw the random draw I got was four and the probability of success sorry the number of tries it required was one so in the first try i accepted the geometric random variable now notice that this return value is exactly the value i got in my in the notes as well and this is because of the seed that i set upstairs once i set the seed the same exact sequence of uniform draws appears okay so that means i once i run it uh, once i set the seed right at the beginning over here i'll see the same exact sequence of uniform draws okay now we did this in the notes as well that often we don't want one draw from the binomial we want many draws from the binomial okay which now how many do i want i'm going to set that sample size to be 1000 so i'm going to store all of those samples in samp 
and uh, all of the number of tries in n dot try, right? So I'm going to get capital N different samples from the binomial and capital N different values of the number of tries it took to um, X get an acceptance, okay? Now for T going from one through capital N means for each sample, go and call the draw binom. It returns a, a value, two values, store those two values in foo. The first value is my sample. So go and store that in the tth position because this is the tth time I'm calling the function and store the second value of foo in the tth position here because this is the second time I'm calling the function here. And this is the tth time. And once I run this, okay, I get mean of samp. Uh, once I run this, I've got my samples and I know that the mean of samp should be 2.5 which it is very close to 2.5 and the mean of tries should be according to the calculations it should be approximately c which is 2.7 something or 2.3 something and that's what it turns out to be now samp actually if i go to my my console samp if i look at head of samp it has head of samp means show me the first few observations of the vector samp so it will it shows me 4 4 1 2 2 3 means the first time the function was called, it returned the binomial draw four. The next time it was called, it returned four. The third time it was called, the binomial draw return was one, and then two, and then two, and three, and so on. I can, now these are 1000 draws. I can also do a histogram of these samples. Take a second. And once I do a histogram, I see, okay, zero was called about 50 times. 1 was called about, you know, 150 times, 2 was called about these number of times, 3 was called about these number of times, and that's exactly what I expect when p is equal to 0.25, right? When p is equal to 0.25, that is exactly what I expect, that I'm not going to get such high um, um, uh, probabilities of success, oh, sorry, such high draws from the, um, from the binomial random variable. Okay, this is already something we have done in the in the notes, but now what we'll do is we'll take a closer look at binomial and geometric. Now, what turns out, I've written this over here, turns out this choice of binomial and geometric can work. So if you have a binomial target and you have a geometric proposal, it can work, but not always. So what if, okay, what if instead of n equals 10, uh, I changed n to something else. So first I'm going to just run the code for n equals 10. So p equals 0.25, right? n in my example was 10. I create a sequence of x. Uh, and what I'm going to calculate is the denominator q of x. So over here in this, in the notes, I'm going to calculate q of x and then I'm going to cal calculate p of x, okay? So the mass of the geom is the geom and the mass of the binom is this, okay? So I get that and then I will, I will again calculate all underscore c. So the same c calculation I'm going to do. But now what I'm doing is I'm going to calculate the probability, plot the probability mass functions of the proposal and the target. So over here in the red curve is going to be the probability mass function for the proposal. Now you can see that this is what the proposal mass function looks like. At one, I have this mass. At two, I have this mass. At three, I have this mass and so on, okay? And I, in blue, I draw the proposal, uh, sorry, other, I draw, sorry, in red is the mass function for the binomial and in blue is the mass function for the geometric, which is the proposal. And look, you know, the geometric puts the largest value on on one okay which means that there is a large value on one under the proposal a small value of on of one under the target but that's okay because the other values seem to happen reasonably often the idea being that the proposal seems to match the the um, target distribution fairly reasonably okay but now let's change n to a hundred Okay, so now my target is binomial 100 comma 0.25 and my geometric is still the same, geometric p 0.25 because n does not affect the geometric random variable. Okay, 
this is my target mass function. In red over here, this is what my target mass function looks like. And in blue, this is my proposed proposal mass function. Now, what the mass function over here indicates is that all or a lot of the values of the geometric are going to be from 0 to, let's say, 18. That's where most of the mass is. That means when we propose the values from geometric, it's going to be proposed from basically these places. But the target distribution, the distribution from, where, from which I want the samples, actually has mass here, far away from where the mass of the proposal is. So what that means is that I am not very often going to draw samples from where the target distribution takes mass because the geometric proposal doesn't draw samples from there very often. So this is a situation where if I look at all underscore C for this situation, it's, sorry, if I look at C, the max value of C, it is 1028, right? Which means that we know now that the larger the value of C, the more inefficient the algorithm is. And that's exactly what we see here. Because C is so, la so large, uh, because the two distributions are so different from each other, C is so large, indicating that you're going to need a really, really large number of samples from the proposal to get one acceptance from the target. I can change this N to 500, repeat this whole process. C now is 3.7 to the power, into 10 to the power 16. That's a massive number. And when I plot this, this is what the mass function under the target looks like. And look, this is what the mass function under the proposal looks like in blue. Now there is e like absolutely zero overlap. And that is why essentially once in, you know, four into 10 to the power 16 proposals, will the geometric give me a draw sort of close to where the ta target is, okay? So in order to make this work, what we can do is we can choose the same uh, in the geometric proposal. This is our target for the binomial. In the geometric, we can then maybe choose a different mean p under the proposal. Okay, now I'm just trying to explain some intuition on how to choose proposals. We can choose a different value of p that will give us better proposals rather than choosing the same p that is in my binomial proposal. And the way we might do it is we might look at the mean of the geometric proposal and match the mean of the geometric with the mean of the binomial distribution. And when I do this and I get a P star for my geometric, I am choosing P star for our geome so that NP, which is the mean of the uh, binomial random variable, is equal to 1 minus p star by p star, which is the mean of this geometric random variable. So I'm choosing p star so that these, the mean of the target is same as the mean of the proposal for the same value of n, which is 500. And that p star is now going to be very small. It's like 0 0.008. So now this is the p or value of the probability of success I'm choosing in my geometric random variable. And when I use this, Right? So now my mass.geom is dgeom at p star and mass.binom is dbinom at just the normal required p. Now the value of c has gone from something into 10 to the power 16 to 25. Very, very efficient compared to where we were before. And if I plot the probability mass functions, whoops, so we're, we're now, I'm really zoomed in now. Um, you know, this is the probability mass function for the geometric with such a low probability of success, right? So this is sort of a little bit of intuition on how to choose um, and what do the proposal and the, and the target actually look like? How are they compatible? How might one choose a proposal distribution? Okay, now codes that I do these visualizations for will be shared with you. So you can take a look at the code, run these lines of code, maybe change something for yourself and really learn through this process how do we code in R.